if the greater narcissist was honest. The greater narcissist, be they lower greater, middle greater or upper greater, know what they are. They may not refer to themselves as an upper greater narcissist, because that is my lexicon. But they know what they are. They know that they are self-aware, Machiavellian. They know that they enjoy manipulating people. They plan ahead. They operate in a calculated and conscious way, and are well aware of that. Despite knowing all of this, the greater narcissist will not tell a victim face-to-face what they are, how they think, how they operate. For to do so would be to amount to a transference of power and would be contrary to the needs of the greater narcissist in maintaining that power over the victim. I, as the ultra, of course, can tell you all about my thoughts and the way that my kind operate, because you don't know who I am, and therefore there is no transference of power from me to you, there is just empowerment for you with regard to the narcissist in your life and the extension of my legacy. What if, however, the greater narcissist sat down for a fireside chat with you, and, knowing full well what he or she is, decides to tell you more about what goes through their mind and how they regard you? What would it sound like? How would the greater narcissist convey that information to you? It would sound something like this. Failure creates opportunity. It creates the opportunity for you to learn. I know, however, that sitting you down and explaining your failure to you is far too easy. That will not lead to a correction in your behaviour, and neither will it provide me with what I need. A quiet word in your ear, a gentle touch, the whisper of blame, and the suggestion of reparation will not serve either of us. You must be punished for your failure, and in doing so, I create an opportunity for you to learn from that failure, and in turn, I grant you absolution. I must confess that I dole out the savage sanctions for your transgressions to serve my purposes, but happily there is a benefit for you as well. The negative fuel which I extract from you as a consequence of the chastisement which I visit upon you, is entirely necessary. I must have it, for if I do not, I run the risk of being destroyed, and this world needs people like me. My kind are the achievers, the creators, and the builders who act with clarity of purpose, absolute vision, and without the blurring nature, and hampering effects of the emotional baggage which hinders others. We are needed to succeed, to create industries, to entertain the masses, to achieve sporting perfection, to compose the sublime, paint the ethereal, and shine. Without us, the world would be a lesser place, and that is why we must always exist. Your part in this does not go uncredited. If it were not for you and your kind, then I would not receive the fuel, both positive and negative, which is required in order for me to exist and fulfil my purpose. I need you. I do not like to admit that fact, but it is a recognised one. I need to control you. I need your fuel. I need your character traits. And I need residual benefits from you, although they are less likely to be obtained in the way that they are for the lesser and mid-range of our brethren. In return, I provide you with a period of brilliance, and then a period of correction, to allow you to recognise the error of your ways. I cannot just tell you what you have done wrong, that would be far too easy, and you would not become a better person if the way forward was made too easy for you, The harshness of my teaching, the horror of my manipulations, and the savage lectures are all for your own good. It is only through such stern and disciplined admonishments that you will begin to understand, and then you will find absolution. 
You will, eventually, although the lessons may take some considerable time, years, in certain instances, come to understand what your role is. Not only will you understand your role, but you will willingly accept that position as a sacrifice, which you must make for the greater good. By acknowledging your role in submitting to us, you will find absolution. You will begin to realize that the sacrifices that you have made of your self-worth, your confidence and your self-esteem, have been worthwhile because they have helped fuel me, and thus you have allowed me to exist. Consider that you are central to the existence of one such as I. You prove to be an integral part in enabling me to exist and to function, and in turn, it is through your involvement that I am able to bring my brilliance to bear on the world. Such an involvement should be welcomed by you, and you ought to give thanks for being allowed to contribute, to participate, and to be involved in this enterprise. You, through me, are able then to create a lasting legacy. True, you must ensure that you endure considerable hardship in fulfilling this role, but in doing so, you become a better person, a worthwhile person, and a useful person. Through the correction that I shall administer to you, you will suffer. But then, when has anything that has been worth doing been easy and pain-free? Never. I share that pain. Do you think it is easy to have the burden of the necessity to control people all of the time? Of course, I am accomplished at it, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't come without considerable skill and ability. Do you think that it is easy leading, guiding, and forging a new path, always moving forward? Oh no, we all have our crosses to bear, and mine is heavier than most. Not that I complain. I merely tell you that this is the case so that you understand and I exhibit, of course, the fortitude and determination that I know you will have to possess in order to ensure that you realize your true potential by my hand. I chose you because I knew that you would ultimately do the right thing. I chose you because I knew you would provide me with what I needed. I expected that it would always be good, but I also recognized that even when you failed me in that aspect of your role, I could still count on you to endure the hardship and the denigration, because you wanted to help me. You wanted to realize the role which I had secured for you. You wanted to succeed, just as I have wanted you to succeed. I am a harsh taskmaster, but you brought it on yourself. You failed and therefore you must be punished for this aberration. Yet through this failure you can redeem yourself. You can exhibit your true worth and make amends for your failings, your shortcomings and your betrayal. I know you can do this, because that is why I chose you. I know you can do this, because I can see it in you. I know that you can do this because I will make you, no matter what and against whatever odds, achieve this. I only have your best interests at heart, even if my tongue and fists may seem to tell you to the contrary. You will not like me because I am hard, but it is this hardness which means that you will learn much from me. You will realize your potential and you will always strive, driven on by me, with my encouragement, harsh as it may seem, to achieve what is right for me, for the world, and ultimately, through that, you will serve a purpose and achieve your absolution.